March 27th last, 1,322 displaced persons sailed past the Statue of Liberty into the safe harbor of New York. Rescued by the International Refugee Organization of the United Nations, their eyes filled with tears of happiness as they were welcomed to America. From the teeming shores of an unsettled world, they had come in search of human dignity, in search of freedom, from want, from fear, from persecution. At last, the hope and the dream had come true. They had found a home and peace. Forgotten was the nightmare of war. Erased was the torment of the concentration camp. A golden door had opened. A new life had begun. For all except one of them. For he had come so far only to be locked out. Okay, Kuban, you're next. Let's go. Kuban, the stowaway. Sit down. Name? Peter Kuban. You speak English? Yes. What did you learn in school? No, sir. From other prisoners in concentration camp. I had much time to learn. Your nationality? I have none. I was born in Hungary, but the Hungary I loved is no more. Any distinguishing marks? Scars. Marks on your body for identification. No fingernails on second, third, and fourth fingers. What happened to your fingernails? They thought I knew something. They pulled them out with pliers. It's already seven years. Any other marks? I have a scar on the right shoulder from a bayonet. Never mind. Last permanent address. Camps. What camps? Auschwitz, labor camps, concentration camps, disciplinary camps. Ten years in camps. How old are you? Twenty-five. Family? The gas chamber, 1944. You stored away at Trieste. How did you get from Chapron to Trieste? I walked. 300 miles? I walked. Without passport, without money? I have money. Eight dollars. I can't pay the head tax. Kuban, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do. You stowed away. You're here illegally. But... We can't let you in. The law is exact. We have to send you back. Back? You do not understand. Listen, I escaped. If they get me back, I'll be dead. I have committed no crime. A man has a right to live, to have a home, to be free. We have no choice. Our job is to enforce the law. I read the law. It says that you must allow me to come in. What law is that? The Displaced Persons Law. Statute number six. It was passed by your Congress. What about Statute six? I tell you, a person bearing arms for the Allied cause in World War II has the privilege to come into America without a quota number, before others. Yes, that's true. You can prove that you helped the Allied cause? Just before the end of the war, I escaped from Auschwitz. I joined the underground. 
and I found uh, an American parachute soldier. His leg was broken. I hid him in a stable for five days. I stole food for him. When the front collapsed, I carried him on my back to an American field hospital. What was his name, the soldier? Tom. It was Tom. Give us his name, address, outfit. It was Tom. He was a parachute soldier. His name and address. He lives in New York. He lives here. Yes, and his name. He called me Pete. I called him Tom. He's a musician, he told me. He plays the, the clarinet. You need evidence, signatures, witnesses. If you don't even know his name, we cannot help you. But I saved him. He lives in New York. He told me. He used to talk to me about a place where he worked. A crowded street. A street called Ti Times, Times Square, that's it. He told me that he wanted to go back to Times Square. To do you any good, you'll need his full name and address. I could find him. If you let me off the boat, I can find him. He lives in New York. He's a musician. New York is not Chaperon. Have you ever been in a big city? No. New York has eight million people, a hundred thousand Toms, fifty thousand musicians. But I could find him. I know it. I could find him, and he would prove my story. We can't let you off this ship. You do not believe me. Look, he gave me his watch. The watch doesn't prove anything. I'm sorry, Kuban. The law gives us no choice. We have to send you back. Stateless Peter Kuban arrived today as a stowaway aboard the SS Concord. Unable to furnish the necessary papers, he will be deported to Trieste tomorrow. Take it easy, kid. That story will make you famous. Sure. Millions of dames will read about you and cry in their beer over you. People will even write to their congressman. Yes. And then what will happen? Nothing. Tomorrow you'll be sailing back home.
Just like Tom said. First one ever jumped ship on us. Yeah, if these fellas know all the tricks. Well, if we don't get him back, it'll be my neck. Well, for one thing, we know he's hurt. We'll check the hospitals. You take that to tail, Swenson. You know that clarinet player he was telling us about? Yeah. You think he'd be crazy enough to try to find him? You believe that story? It sounded on the up and up to me, didn't it? They've all got stories. When you hear them day after day, you don't know what to believe. But if it is true, then he'd be looking around Times Square. Possibility. We'll try it. Come on. We'll split up the area between uh, 42nd Street and uh, 47th from 8th Avenue to 5th. You take this, Kylie. Yes, sir. I'll take 42nd to 47th, Mellinger. Take this section and Toomey, that one. Cover all night spots, every place that has a band. He's on the level about that clarinet fellow. Well, what happens if you don't get him back by 7? At your sailing time? Yes. Well, he becomes a fugitive and a criminal. After that, he'll never be able to get into this country at all. Well, let's get going. Clarinet player. His name is Tom. Tom? Are you kidding? We got an old girl band. <laughs> One. Your clarinet player. His name is Tom. Clarinet player, trumpet player. Who knows their names? They play. May I look, please? Oh, help yourself. Thank you. Only don't block the aisle.
Zelda. Hey, she's stealing my coat. Come back. Hey, stop. Hey, hey, she's stealing my coat. Hey, come back. Hey, hey. She went to the park. Go after her. Hey, look. There's a police car. Hey! Hey, police! Get her. My partner's calling in. We'll have all the actions blocked. Just what are you doing? You want to get out, don't you? Of course I do. Then crawl. Follow me. Get down on your belly. Crawl. Thanks. I'll be seeing you. Hey. Look, you helped me and I'm grateful. Let's call it quits, okay? You're not safe yet. Let me worry about me, will you? I wouldn't feel right if you were caught. I'm relieving you of all obligation. You can clear your conscience as of now. What is it with you? Where do you live? I got a room. All right. We go there. We? Oui. Not just a minute. You mean if I don't? I haven't got much choice, have I? Why don't you be a good Joe and go home? I met all kinds, all with the same idea. But you, you got me buffaloed. Buffaloed? Don't you understand English? You're fast enough to take advantage of a situation. I had to do it. Had to? You trying to win a bet or something? I had to find a place to rest. Oh, that's a new approach. Have you some water, please? Over there. Look what you've done. I'm sorry. My landlady just as soon tossed me out of my ear. I hope she didn't. She... Open up. I know you're in there. Where's that money you promised me? I'll have it for you in a day or two, Mrs. Hinckley. Bourgeois. You've been giving me that for weeks. I'm not having any more. Honest, I will. Either you dig up the cash right away, or when Eddie gets home, you'll put your things out on the sidewalk. Mrs. Hinckley, I promise you. No, I want you out of here anyway. I've seen the way you've been egging my Eddie on. Egg? I'm black and blue from fighting the big girl off. Now, you get your things out of here, or when Eddie gets home, he'll put them out. And he'll be home soon. 
Oh, wait a minute, Mrs. Hinckley. I, I think I can let you have part of it. So, you've been holding out. All right, open up and let me have it. Under the door. Seven lousy dollars. You owe me 30. I'll get you the rest. I got a job coming. You cough it up by day after tomorrow. That's final. Thanks for the loan. But if you got any ideas, it's going to entitle you to any special privileges. I'm sorry. You have enough troubles without me. Well, it was not such a good idea that I had. <sighs> I hope you understand. It, it's nothing personal. I... I won't trouble you anymore. There's no use asking where to send the money. I don't know when I'll ever have any. Just don't steal any more coats. I know. I'm not very good at it. Goodbye. So long. Must go. Must find Tom. Just take it easy. My ribs. Something must be broken. How'd you do that? When I jumped from the ship. What ship? It's here in the paper. Better get to a doctor. No. He would report me. They would send me back. A broken rib could puncture something. You want to die. I don't want to die. But I don't want to go back. Lift up. Let's take off your coat. That'll hold for a while. Thank you. You were angry for making you bring me here. You better rest. I better go now. No. You stay here. You're in no condition to be running. And you're not so hard as you pretend. Tell me. Is there not work for everyone here in America? Almost everyone. So how it happens that a girl like you steals a coat? I don't know. I was, I was cold. I, I needed a coat. More than that, I was fed up, I guess. Did you ever put tips on shoelaces? 
tip on shoelaces? Yeah, that's what I did for two years. There's a big steel machine here, see? And over here, a giant spool of shoelace. You pull it out like this, 27 inches at a time, all day. And then you stamp a pedal, and a ton of steel bangs down, cuts the lace, and rolls the tip on. Bang like that, and again, bang all day. You're scared you'll smash your finger. At the same time, you got to keep your eye on the assistant foreman. Because every time he comes by, he pinches you. You do this till your brain goes numb. And you get 35 bucks a week. And then all of a sudden, you have an appendix attack, an operation. And you're out, flat on your back. And you just can't get back on your feet. And you get fed up. And you want to strike back at somebody, anybody. And you steal a coat. When I get work, I will help you. I never met anybody like you before. You have a girl where you come from? There were no girls in the camps, except behind barbed wire. In a minute, honey, as soon as I finish this hand. Well, right now, darling, wait till you hear. In a minute, I'm sitting with a 450 hand. Uh-oh, I passed. Honey, you see, you made me give my hand away. Oh, but, Tom, this is important. Here, Bebop, you play it out. You see, Tom, you're not even married yet. It must be important. <laughs> No, Mamie. I tell you, that's not lipstick on my shirt. I had a red pencil in my pocket or something. No, I'm at the musicians' club now, and I'm waiting for a job. Hey, buddy. Mamie, I tell you, it's just... All right, now, what is it, baby? Well, you know how I've been badgering Shimmy for weeks about getting you sent. Shimmy's arranged a spot for you with Jack T. Garden's band. Jack T. Garden? Oh, baby, baby. That's the kind of a break I've been waiting for since I got out of the army. Well, now, hold on, darling. You only said if you've got the stuff. You're talking to me, baby. Have I got the stuff for having it? Well, honey, I know it, and you know it. But you've got to convince Jack. Convince him? I'll blow my brains out. Hey, when does he want me to come down? Tonight. Oh, right now, in fact. Got your clarinet with you. Uh, yeah, it's in my locker. Good. Well, now get yourself cleaned up and comb that silly hair of yours. I want you to look pretty. Okay, well, look. Look, here's the key to my locker. Uh, you get the licorice stick in my hat, and I'll get all cleaned up, all right? Tom. If Jack keeps you on, then we can do all the things we've wanted to do. Oh, baby, I'll make him bust open that city hall so we can get our license. Even if he doesn't, Tom? Um... Now, we've been all through that before. I told you I don't want a wife that supports me. Oh, is that so? What are you worried about? I'll get the job. Here's one for luck. And remind me to kiss Shimmy when I see him. He'll do on his 10%. I'll kiss him 10% worth. Oh, go make yourself okay. pretty. Lost up world, this is. Here's a poor sucker. He walks 400 miles to stow away on a boat to come here. So what happened to him? What? So they're going to ship him back, that's what. Forgot his driver's license or something. So he can't come in. 
Oh, what a well. They should give it back to the Indians. And we think we got troubles. Take Herbie. You know, Fat Herbie, the trombone player. I'm on a job with him last week. All night long, he keeps knocking me a tea kettle about if he eats too much, he keeps on belching, you know? Interferes with his rhythm. So I says, Herbie, if you eat too much and you keep on belching, so don't eat so much. Reasonable? Sure. Yeah, so he says, but I like to eat. It's my pleasure. I like to eat. Just like that. So I says, okay, so eat. So belch. And he thinks he's got troubles. Here's a guy with troubles. Ten years he spent already in the concentration camp, and they're going to send him back. Oh, what a world. Fooey. This fella here in the paper. It's Peter, the one I told you about, the, the kid that saved my life. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Oh, what a rotten break. I've got to go down there, see what I can do. Down where? The immigration office. Tonight? What could you do? I don't know. There must be something. I ought to talk to them, maybe keep them from sending him back. But you're supposed to be at Jack's place right now. For heaven's sakes, Tom. I know, I know, but... Then what are we arguing about? He has no passport. He's stowed away illegally. Well, I'm sorry for the fellow, but what can you do? The law says he can't come in. There must be some way. I ought to try. Sure, go fight City Hall. Blow your big chance. I've chased Shimmy for weeks to get you this chance. You say you love me. You won't marry me till you get sent. Well, I've waited five years. But I just can't walk out on him. All right, walk out on me. Go blow your opportunity and go on a wild goose chase. You want to help him go down there tomorrow morning, but right now you're supposed to be at Jack's. They're waiting. And if you don't go, there's a dozen clear enough players waiting for that job. All right, Nancy. You're right. Let's go. Tom. I'm sorry about I said you were right. Now, let's forget it. Well, I'll drop in later and see how it goes. Okay. Let's go. This fella, Tom, if you find him, Will he stand up for you so you can stay here? I know he will. Then we'll find him. In the morning, we'll go to the Musicians' Union. They'll have a list. You see? I needed somebody like you. With brains. Some brains. Look at me. Look at the way I live. This crummy room. Crummy? Why crummy? It's a very good room. And all by yourself. How many nights I have slept on the ground. Or crowded in with 30, 40 people. If I had a room like this for myself, I would feel rich. We look at things differently, I guess. Eh, what I had to do just to stay alive. Tonight, I saw food in a window. Where I come from, men would kill each other for such food. You know, I never had an orange since I was a child. They won't send you back, Peter. We'll manage something together. Maggie. Hey, Maggie. It's Eddie, the landlady's son. I know you're in there. Ma told me. Go away, Eddie. Let a girl sleep. I'll just stay a minute. I've been fighting him off for weeks. I'm in bed, Eddie. See me in the morning. Oh, that's no way. I got a present for you. Thanks. In the morning. I'm coming in. I got a pass key. I better talk with him. 
Let me get something on, Eddie. I'm coming in. I just got in off my run. I figured we'd have a little drink together. I'll leave you the bottle. I'm dead for sleep, Eddie. Leave the bottle and I'll invite you up tomorrow. You're up now. Where's your southern hospitality? Ain't you gonna get me a glass? I don't keep my glasses in the clothes closet, Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm awful dumb. It was real friendly of you to think of me, Eddie. I'm a real friendly guy. Yeah. I told you I liked you. You know, I've had a yen for you ever since you first moved in. I guess you know that. Yeah. You told me. But why don't you be nice and, and let me get some sleep? And maybe tomorrow. Why don't you be nice? Please, Eddie. What's the matter? Am I poisoning something? Of course not. It's just that... The old lady said you gave us some dough. I could fix things up with the old witch. Please, Eddie. Oh, come on, kid. You and me could have lots of laughs. I'm making real dough these days. Cut it out, Eddie, or I'll yell for your mother. Oh, don't pull that hi-hat stuff on me. Oh, a little tiger, eh? <laughs> I like tigers. Let go of her. So my old lady was right. You did have a guy up here. I thought I could bring him out. I'm pretty smart. Oh, Eddie, why don't you be nice? Shut up, you little tramp. Oh. Just bopped you. Get up, you dumb ox, and phone the cops. Cops? Yeah. Order for questioning on charge of assault with intent to kill. Peter Kuban, age 25, 6 feet 2, 170 pounds, black hair, dark eyes. Last seen with girl named Maggie Summers, 5 feet 6, green eyes, blonde. Kuban also is wanted by Immigration Department for illegal entry. This man is dangerous. Approach with caution. May be armed. That complicates things. I better contact the police.
There's an emergency hospital near here. They would report to the police. You don't even know how bad you're hurt. How long do you think you can walk around with those busted ribs? Till I find Tom. You can't take much more. You gotta get off the streets. But where? You got any money? No. Seven dollars was every cent you had. You wait here. I'll be right back. some dough roll over here. What are you talking about? The money, the gators, the scratch. Pick it up, come on. Quit your clowning. Hit the road. Get off our money. Soccer, Louie, go on, soccer. What are you one. doing? I yell for the cops. I ought to belt you. You gonna leave or am I gonna yell? You got a license to block this sidewalk? Gee, Louie, we don't want to get pitched. Come on, let her have the lousy dough, come on. Yeah. Crook. Cradle robber, I hope you get hit with a garbage truck. You stole from those children? Look, you want to stay alive or don't you? Maggie, Maggie. These two dimes will give you a chance to rest until morning. Then we'll go to the Union and find you, Tom. Two dimes? For your hotel room? For two dimes, you can get in the subway and ride all night. Many people sleep in the subway? Not many. Only a few busted suckers like us. This man is wanted on charge of assault and battery. If you see him, call your nearest police precinct station. His name is Peter Kuban. He's six feet, two inches tall, speaks with an accent. Black hair, brown eyes. If you see him, call your nearest police precinct station. Sure can play that horn. Thank <laughs> you. 
What are you doing? I can't sit there any longer. If there's some way I can help that guy, I'm going to find out about it. But you might throw this job and go down there and nothing. But when it was his life or mine, he didn't ask any questions. He just did what he had to do. That's why I'm alive. Tom! That's him, over there. And you want us to believe you let Kuban come up to your room only because he was tired? I don't care what you believe. You want to make a federal case, you go ahead. We just want the facts. His side was caved in. He was bleeding. I tried to help him. Is that a crime? No. You didn't know he was a fugitive? You think that would have made any difference? He's the first guy I met in my life. Treated me decent. Why do you keep hounding him? We've got an assault charge against him. But if you're telling the truth, maybe you can beat the rap. He won't get him. He'll run and hide and run and hide until he drops. He said he'd die before they'd send him back. He means it. She's right, Lieutenant. When he saved my life in Germany, we hid in a haystack. A Nazi soldier jabbed his bayonet through the hay right into Peter's shoulder. He didn't make a sound. He knew that any noise would, would give us away. Bayonet scar on right shoulder. What was that? Oh, I was just remembering something he told us. Well, I'm convinced his story's true. Now, if we can find him before seven, and you back him up as his sponsor, he has a chance. Why before seven? Well, that's when the ship he jumped leaves port. And if he's not in custody by then, he's a fugitive from justice. And he'll face a jail term and deportation. That's the law? That's the law. We gotta find him. Will you put out another bulletin to all police cars, Lieutenant? Right away. It's 3.30 now. You two had better come with me. Come on in and see the police, Sergeant. 101 amusement, speedy educated police. The best trained group of fleas on 42nd Street. Exciting games and girly pictures. Come on in and see them. Biggest amusement arcade in New York City. Admission free. See the train, please. Open all night. Come on in and see the biggest arcade in New York City. Open all night. Biggest arcade on 42nd Street. Come in and see the train, please. They're here for your amusement. <laughs> Over here. Come on, let's get our picture took. <laughs> you go around.
That a girl, Tanya. Go on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill! Bill! Brother Bummer, he's lousing up my act. So long, Bill. See you tomorrow. Nudnik? That's a horse? That's a dog. Hey, Monroe! Okay, Tanya, right with you. Big day, Tanya? You kidding? I'm beat. Seven ways to Dixie. Before you take me home, I want you to take me to the 54th Street Police Station. Police Station? Just do as I say. Take me to the 54th Street Police Station. Don't get away. I'll just be in the station for a minute. Tanya, you know I'm a sensitive type personality. What cooks with a sleeper, hey? Or tell me it's none of my business. So I'll tell you, it's none of your business. Not very fancy, is it? That's nice. It's all right. It's very nice. Mmm, I smell something. Oh, goulash. My mother always has something cooking, no matter what time I get home. Mmm, you'll like this. Hey, you're in bad shape. You better sit down. No, better you should lay down until I get everything ready. Later, you can tell me the whole story. 
Well, don't be bashful. We're just hunkies like you. They call me Tanya. But you know what's my real name? Bella Sequoia. That's a Lulu, ain't it? Now, come on. Down and take off your coat. Don't worry about them. Nothing bothers them. They sleep like rocks. Cute brats, ain't they? Beautiful. Look just like my husband. I know, good tramp. Married me for a meal ticket. I kicked him out a couple of years ago. Now I'll wake you when everything's ready. Just don't worry, relax, fella. Say, you look like you could stand something in your belly. But I must tell you, the immigration officers are looking for me. So let them look. I know about it. Why do you help me? Why? I don't know. Maybe because I'm just a big-hearted slob. Maybe because you, you're a good-looking Hungarian. I got a soft spot in my heart for Hungarians. Especially good-looking ones. Bella, she's man. I know. Bella. What's with this man? A Hungarian boy in big trouble. Boy, Bon Von? Me or boy? Old Vashtid Bon. Oh, here, Mama, read it for yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. The hodge to do, Shaggy Tanny Royta. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow we'll see a lawyer. Right now he needs rest and food. Food we can give. <laughs> Bella, help. Cut some bread. Oh, Mom pooped. <clears throat> Dancing, they call it. Uh, what a way to make a buck. You know who I ought to marry? A chiropractor. <laughs> Bella. Hmm? This young man, maybe he did something bad, a crime. You leave him here in with the babies. Oh, Ma, I'm not that dumb. I stopped off at the police station and checked. He didn't do nothing. Just jumped off a boat. Wants to get in this country and they won't let him. That's all. <laughs> you are a good girl, Bella. <laughs> good you bring him home. Now go and bring him in. Everything is ready. <laughs> okay, uh-oh. Freddy. He ain't gonna like it. Never mind. Freddy's my son. He ain't so bad, as you always say. Yeah. Hiya, Mom. What's cooking? Hello, Freddy. What's with you, Tanya? Why the fish eye? Nothing. You want I should jump up and kiss you? Why not? <laughs> you ought to be proud of your brother tonight. How much you think I raked in? How much? A million dollars. Go ahead, laugh. Someday I'll do it, kid, and the laugh will be on you. Fifty fish, Ma. And it was easy shooting herring in a bathtub. <laughs> Two suckers from out of town. I ran into him in Nicky's bar, you see? And before he could say hocus pocus, upstairs to Randy's layout. They dropped more than a grand. Yeah. This is my cut. And for this, you had to go two years to Peter Stuyvesant's high school, huh? To learn the odds, the percentages. Huh, sister? Huh? Ha. Hey, you want to eat? Get your own plate. But who's it for? You tell him, Ma. Freddy, Bella, Bella, Ma, Ma, you... will you talk English? You know I don't go for this hunky jabber. There is a young Hungarian fellow who is in trouble. Bella brought him home. He is... Here, my educated son. Read. Read. You're kidding. Nobody's kidding. He's in there resting. I'm gonna wake him up to eat. I'll try to act like somebody else. Be nice. Are you nuts? Are you both nuts? No, 
guy's nuts and such a big trap. You don't know what you're doing. The federal cops are after him. The local guys, too. So what? So we don't want them snooping around here. That's what. Speak to yourself. Mind me, we ain't been breaking no laws. Yeah, you think they're going to kiss you for hiding this creep? Look, you get him up and out of here. I'll do it right now. Listen, I'm paying the right around here, not you, my sweet little brother. I'm just getting started. Mom, you tell her. I don't want no cops investigating. You get rid of that guy. You keep your mouth shut. Nobody will know he's here. Yeah? What about the kids? I suppose you'll tape their mouths up so the neighbors won't know anything about it, huh? Damn you, Freddy! I'll knock your block off! Shut up! Ma! You got more sense than this. What business we got with this guy anyway? They got a United Nations for things like this, ain't they? Why don't you go to the UN? Didn't the UN help you bring over your cousin Frank? All right. Tomorrow we'll take him to the UN building and find out. Right now he's sick and he needs rest, and he's staying here. Over my dead body. I'll take care of him right now. Ma, you should have drowned him when he was a baby. Let go. If you think you could stop me, you're crazy. I'm gonna bounce this bum out of here right now. I ain't taking no rap for a lousy foreigner. <laughs> Don't forget, your dead father was a lousy foreigner. Go on, bring him in. And I don't want to hear one more word. What's that? The U.N. building. Oh, you mean the United Nations building? Yes. That's way down 41st Street. It's a big, tall building with a glass wall. You better take a cab. Six o'clock. All cars, 15th Precinct, Kuban seen on First Avenue, near 44th going south. All cars, 15th Precinct. Thanks, Lieutenant. We'll go right over. The woman spotted him. Waitress on her way to work. Just phoned the police. Said she recognized this man from the television last night. Where'd you see him? First Avenue, near 44th, going south. They're covering that section.
Hoban, stop! We're after that man. He's an escaped deportee. Somebody, somebody listen. You, you come here to bring peace to the world. But what is the world? As long as there is one man who can't walk free where he wants. As long as there is one displaced person without home, there won't be peace. Because to each man, he's the world. <laughs> Nobody listens. Seventh floor. The Displaced Persons Commission. This floor. Where'd he go? Down there. Looking for you, and you found me. You're not going back, Pete. I'll back you up. You're going to stay here. 